welcome to the session first of all my name is krishna and today we are going to talk about a topic on learning i mean just a foundation of deep learning you can say because deep learning is a very vast subject you cannot learn in one hour but at least i can give you outline of how a deep learning looks like and all that so this is going to be our agenda in this session we are going to talk about what is artificial intelligence what is machine learning what is deep learning how deep learning works what are the different applications of artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning all of that and if time permits we will see a small hands on which i already created so that you can just get a insight out of it okay what are the applications of artificial intelligence first of all what is artificial intelligence by the way so artificial intelligence is basically that's one of the study of computer science to make computers think like humans when you say computers think like humans what are the activities human do we are smart right we think we have senses we think what is correct what is wrong when we are driving on a particular road we know how to drive it because we have been learning through the entire life right like what is the right way to cross the road what is the right way to not cross the road or we know we have a particular eating habits we know what we like and all if you look at right like a lot of things we are very very smart and computers even today even though the artificial intelligence is booming up so the subject of artificial intelligence it's all about how to make computers when i say computer don't think your laptop or desktop computer is the only computer even your mobile also today behaves like computer right so any device if you are able to make it that's what the study of artificial intelligence is and from there your machine learning deep learning and all things have come so if you look at there are a lot of applications of artificial intelligence if you look at like you have alexa devices you have siri google siri and you have a lot of smartphone smart devices today uh, where they moreover behave like that so these are all different applications of artificial intelligence like your chatbots if you see chatbots that's one great application where without human intervention automatically some system or some software responds to customer and gives the answer like you might not be aware or i'm not sure whether you are really aware if you use even a small app like i have a, this app called fresh to home daily they have a chatbot and how they have made chatbot is pure artificial intelligence where i don't need to call the customer care and wait in the queue for my turn and all over phone right i can just raise a ticket and automatically it goes to them like you see every other app today whether you use internet whether you use any kind of small for milk delivery or vegetable any kind of thing you do they have an app where you don't need to call to support guys right you can just raise a ticket to the they have a chat bot session also so these are all the one of the things we really see on a day to basis and self driving cars you might have seen that so that is another application and this ai music composers are coming dream machine is still under research i doctor these are all there and this predicting the future i'll not say to some extent it's okay but still it is under research kind of and other than this you see alexa siri or the innovations of artificial intelligence so like that if you think there are robots who went do operations that kind of things are also there so there are lots and lots of applications are there where they are built with the concept of artificial intelligence now we answered about this what is artificial intelligence so it is all this they are expanding on what they mean by artificial intelligence because when you say human humans can do this visual perception they can recognize speech they can do decision making all that they want computer to perform that's the whole objective of it okay now a if you look at i mean for us it is all easy because we have been trained for years and years right whereas for ai it's not easy maybe game playing might be easy for us because we might have learned from our grandfather or parents but for computer it's not that easy right that might be one kind of area expert system is another area natural language processing is another area where the computer can understand the language you are typing based on that it respond back chatbot is one good example you are siri or alexa is another example neural networks which is part of your deep which is another name for deep learning that is also one of the specialization and robotics right where robot is doing instead of humans perform the things where robot is doing that now this is the actual classification of any subject of artificial intelligence if you see artificial intelligence it's like if you take it as a one subject or one concept inside that is what you have machine learning and deep learning so like we know about artificial intelligence it's all about making computers behave like humans or think like humans or perform activities like humans that could be anything right now in that why there are two categories so machine learning is one of but in that the sub part is deep learning what actually machine learning is machine learning is all about multiple algorithms or i say different types of algorithms that actually help to not only understand patterns of the data 
lots and lots of data sets you're given but also it should be able to generalize and then start predicting it should be able to do both that is what machine learning is all about if you see any machine learning subject you will have bunch of algorithms where their objective is first generalize the pattern from the data set given then start performing predictions based on what it has learned now in that one subject of it is deep learning other name is neural network where the idea here is I mean it is not theoretically proven if you go deep there's no theoretical I mean this is all hypothetical actually there's no evidence to say that neural networks is moreover behave like human that's what the idea is some books or some articles might I mean wrongly give that perception but it's actually true this is not proven saying neural networks is more about simulating human brain because human brain have a lot more activities than what neural networks do but if you look at at a high level moreover things happen similar to that to some extent not fully like you have a neuron which is nothing but a mathematical function here which moreover behaves like doing one set of action there might be another neuron which is like another mathematical function doing another set of action like that so that way you might think like it is a, like a, you know your neuron cells in our brain but our neuron cells does even more than that now what is machine learning so machine learning like i said it's one part of the artificial intelligence where it helps you to learn something from the data understand the pattern out from the data then after understanding the pattern start doing some prediction based on the experience or based on what it has learned it should be able to predict something and it should be able to say something about some unseen data that's what is machine learning about so like i said without intervention and all so the only difference if you see from a program which you have written normally generally when you write any program like a factorial of a number or prime number where you give an input your computer will be able to perform some task or your program and then it gives some output that's it done so if you run it 100 times that's it done the program will still behave the same until you change the logic inside it in the case of machine learning programs what happens is the program will be written in such a way where it will not only do what you've been asked at the same time it will be having a feedback like kind of loop let's say this is the input and this is your machine learning program it will have a feedback loop to your you know uh, there will be not be just input there will be the input will be generally a data set basically so if you see this kind of machine learning program in general the way a machine learning program will be here is the new input is nothing but your data set that means this kind of data set and your machine learning program also will be given output that means for this data date whatever output will come that is also given that means you have input output and this your machine learning program should be able to understand some get pattern from it it should be able to give you some pattern using which it can say any unseen data i see i will be able to tell you like what it is that's what the general schematic is whereas if you see normal programs you will have just input there will not be any output right so that's the difference here from the machine learning program to your program so we'll talk about this this is one of the program that help you to start from a very uh, from a layman perspective we actually start training people who don't know anything about deep learning we'll start those foundations right from there we'll actually take them to tensorflow and uh, other libraries like cnn gnn and ann where they are popular deep learning algorithms so this is one particular training program we have in case you want to become expert in deep learning this is one thing you can enroll in itereka now we have machine learning now the question you might have is in machine learning we have a subset of deep learning right why first of all machine learning we are not using why we are taking into another a subset of machine learning which is deep learning why should we go for it i mean there should be a reason right so first of all the reason being when you say high dimensional data like when like let's say there are a lot of inputs and outputs are there machine learning might not be really very useful because it's not scaled to work at that maybe what people generally do is they actually eliminate a lot of inputs not required by using some feature selection methods and then start doing all the feature engineering there that is one thing other thing is the feature extraction is not very great in the machine learning algorithms that's where when i say feature extraction that is very much required for applications like image processing or image recognition face detection nature language there the feature extraction is very very important so those fields the machine learning algorithms really don't excel that's where people have come up with some other architecture called deep learning where they said hey this is not how we should be doing maybe we should do something differently and they come up with something called a layered architecture that kind of layered architecture is what we are calling it as a deep learning and all so when you see any deep learning algorithm if you can see if you see any of the deep learning algorithm you will see some kind of things like this you will see a lot of circles which people call it as neurons 
like this you will have a lot of connections to each one of them then you have to this i'm not a very good uh, you know i don't have very good experience on using paint so fragments might not come but this is how it will be so this people call it as a input layer this is hidden layer and this is output layer any deep learning algorithm you take these are the things will be there so like i am saying the layered architecture here each circle you are seeing people call this as a neuron that neuron if you look at deeply at a programming level it is nothing but one kind of mathematical function being programmed which is actually written to understand one of the feature when i say one of the feature let's say this is a boy you your deep learning has to understand or let's say this robot it has to understand that one feature might be responsible for detecting the eye another neuron might be responsible for detecting this hand another neuron might be responsible for detecting the legs like that each one of the neuron at a high level if you see they are responsible for understanding each of the feature and there will be lot of neurons each of the neurons when they finally understand different features of it and they give responses based on that okay so there will be you will be seeing lots and lots of neurons not just one and each neuron the basic job is to understand one particular feature that's what they do at a high level okay so yeah this is the same thing i think we talked about it the same thing so you have an input layer you have this hidden layers you have one hidden layer second hidden layer and there's output layer so it could be as simple as let's say i want a machine learning algorithm deep learning is also a machine learning algorithm if you give zero number or any if you show it a diagram of zero number or show it a diagram of one number it should be able to say from the image it is zero or one so how it says this based on this particular when you write zero how you write it you write like this right based on this curve or based on the how it spans all that there are multiple things how each one of these neuron which is nothing but a mathematical function like i said will be responsible for understanding the shape and finally it comes as a signal which is called activation signal at the end where it says that hey this is zero maybe this might this output signal is for zero or this output signal might be one if you are talking about nine digits you will have multiple output signal which is representing each single digit but overall this many neurons are there the main understanding you should have is each neuron is responsible for understanding one feature of it and deep learning algorithms are very very popular in understanding these feature extractions which in general our day to day use cases is very useful like image recognition face detection emotion detection finger sprint detection all this needs the feature detection very very accurately and very precise a uh, very accurately there should not be a lot of approximations right so that is where this guy really excels that's where you see in lot of computer vision and all deep learning being used because this guy excels there now like i said you can see that face detection like i said that is where the feature extraction is very important object classification machine translation handwriting generation like the number 0 1 2 3 3 character text generation image caption generation or coloration of black and white images or automatic game playing all that needs lot of feature extraction that's where this guy excels very much and google lens which we use on a day to day is a perfect example for deep learning where you see if you put google lens on any particular scan code it automatically tells the product name right like here in this case they are putting on a meatball shop here in this case they might have put on a scanner and it automatically detects that scanner product is related to a flower like that these are all the applications of deep learning similarly here if you see the translation that means you given have this and it's automatically says this particular in a particular language let's say mark or something it's english it is translating to dark by doing lot of processing on its own this is another application of deep learning okay so i'll just show you at a high level if you see i'm using other than deep learning i'm using some other technique called uh, uh, gradient descent that is one of the technique i'm using or grade cam people will call it so using great cam what i was trying to do is when you given an image it should be able to tell me whether it is an african elephant or a cat or a dog or whatever so you see this particular algorithm which i have written this is a function which actually detects using keras and other particular libraries which i have installed and these are the libraries i have used right from tensorflow keras and all what it will do is for any given image it should automatically tell me whether it's an elephant or something so how it tells me is when say given image internally it gets converted into a matrix which is nothing but you know let's say this image is of 400 by 500 size it will convert into 400 500 into 3 why 3 is because every image can be represented in terms of red green blue for those three channels you multiply by 3 and all these pixels will be represented in a matrix 
that's where your numpy and all algorithms will work where we try to understand about the image and by using this great cam and algorithm i would be able to say what is this particular image is here in this case i'm trying to detect whether it's a dog or a cat kind of so if you see at the end it is able to make a prediction saying you see it says that this is an african elephant based on 88 percentage this is tusker based on 0.10 so it is giving different different i we always take the maximum right so it says based on its understanding the higher one is 88 percentage which is african elephant but it also figured out it looks like a water buffalo also but the percentage is not even one if you see it is 0, 0.0 it is not even one so this we can ignore but this is the highest one so we consider this as african elephant so that is how we start predicting and here in this case what we used is we used a mix of one of the deep learning algorithm along with the great cam where it will help you to detect what this image is this is just one part of the application to understand there are other applications also like there is something called image captioning where by just looking at image your uh, algorithm should be able to say what that is image is all about like if i given this image it should say that a big elephant is following a small elephant something like that it should tell me the caption for that we not only use deep learning but also use nature language processing also in order to give that caption from an image that is actually called image caption which is another application part of it and uh, that's about our session today that's it from my side i think this session helped you at least to get an understanding of what deep learning is see you all bye